So obviously that wasn't good. But guys, sit down, relax, don't get mad, zip it if you have already good if you haven't already from here on out just zip it on the text chat group chat that you're in with any rangers fan friends tip your cap hide your condescension you know you're feeling it because game one let's be honest that was the texas rangers super bowl which is different for people living in the greater Arlington, South Oklahoma area. Obviously, the football team doesn't do that. The football team that, honestly, that area is probably more focused on than the somewhat legitimate team in town. Tip your cap. That's their Super Bowl. Let them have it. Let them wait until about 2 o'clock this afternoon to figure out that baseball's playoffs are series. Let them wait. And once that happens, we move on to game two. Tonight, Fran Valdez, Nathan Yavaldi. Okay? So that's how we start off the morning. Relax. We've been here before. The Astros have been here before. After the game, which I went to, you heard it from both Dusty Baker and Justin Verlander. Sean, let's start with Dusty Baker talking about just sometimes tipping the old cap. Sometimes you got you to gotta say, hey, the guy threw a great game tonight against us. I mean, uh, excellent game. And... You know, they say good pitching beats good hitting, but when you don't hit, everybody wants to know what's wrong. So uh, it's not a whole bunch to say he threw a real good game against us. He did. And it's also pretty annoying that you got the performances that you got at the plate from Jose Altuve, Kyle Tucker, especially Jordan Alvarez, who stunk. But... I think after a night like last night, I'm not freaking out about anything in the Astros lineup. I'll just say that Jordan Montgomery had a good game. You also heard this same kind of mindset from Justin Verlander after the game. We've been here before. Here is the Astros pitcher who was one of the few Astros who did do his job yesterday. I mean, we've been here. Uh, you know, I um, while I was waiting outside, the TV's on. I hear that you lose the first game. You've got like a 63% chance to lose um, the series. Um, you know, we've we've uh, so obviously it's not like detrimental. Um, you know, it's not where you if you had your druthers, obviously you'd rather win game one. Um, but uh, you know, sometimes you got to tip your cap. You know, we lost game one of the World Series last year. Uh, we've lost game one of some playoff series before, and 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 uh, it's a great thing about this team. You know. Uh, Obviously, nobody's sitting in the locker room right now uh, happy. Um, but, um, you know, it's very matter of fact. Okay. You know, we just got punched. How do you answer? Don't you love that saying, tip your cap? Sean Mavis, how many times over the course of your career, the course of your life? My career? Yeah. No, yeah, I don't no, know why my I career. Said, I don't know why I said career. But no. we could say over your radio career. But, you know, sometimes you wear hats. Sometimes yeah. you look like Lance McCullers. And sometimes you've got the headband. you got the headband on today. But... How many times do you think you've tipped your hat or taken a bow towards somebody that you just respect? Oh, um, sarcastically or not sarcastically? <laughs> no, seriously. Seriously, how We're, many times do I tip my cap? Sean. Do I take off my cap and then give a little You don't even have to take curtsy? it off. You could, you could just grab the brim and nod it down. And I noticed what you did there sarcastically. This is not sarcastic. <laughs> well, we no, because I've done that a bunch. I've done that to you like almost once a week. I sarcastically tip my cap to you. Well, but. you should seriously do it more often than <laughs> you do because I am really good at this. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Like I've got all sorts of zingers that some would call corny. 
but we all know they're hilarious. You have a hard time admitting that you're laughing to it, but I'm saying it now. We're not tipping our cap to the Rangers sarcastically. If you're watching on twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5, maybe you understand what I'm really saying here, but we would never tip our cap to a franchise like the Texas Rangers, bless their heart, game one was their Super Bowl. We would never do it in a condescending manner. We never would because we respect good ball. And the Rangers played good ball last night. So we tip our hats. I'm tipping my hat. How many times have I tipped a hat you in don't my life? You don't hats as often. Though. I don't. My hair's too good. Yeah. You know? You've got good hair, too, honestly. The, the, the amount of times you wear hats and headbands. Do we need to work on this? It's just because when I put my head down, my hair is so long, it gets in my face. Oh. And I have to work with my head down a lot at this You know this what? That is board. a good point. That is a very good point. It's also hard to point. eat without it. Do you ever eat your hair accidentally? Take a bite, maybe. Take a chomp? Nice yeah, little chomp out of it. It just gets in there, you know. We have some comments here on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. From the 713. It was a good game, but low IQ base running can't happen in the ALCS. That's the most frustrating part of last night, where in the eighth inning... The Astros get Jose Altuve on first base. There's no outs. Alex Bregman seemed to clobber a ball that I thought there was a chance it was out. But, unfortunately, he hit it to the part of left center where there's still some room. And 21-year-old Evan Carter sneaks into that corner Makes a jumping catch at the wall. That kid had a great game last night. Throws it back. The Rangers appeal whether or not Altuve crossed over second base. After the game, Dusty Baker didn't seem to agree with the call. Uh, He pushed back, I think, as much as he could push back without probably getting fined here. He believes that it's a matter of interpretation. Here is the skipper of the Astros. That was close, you know, because he had his foot still on the bag, you know, and uh, that was a matter of interpretation. But his left foot was past the bag. And so, um, you know, it didn't work. I watched the replay a couple of times, and I honestly don't know if he stepped towards third base before stepping back, it did look like his foot was on the bag for the entirety. So I get Dusty's argument there. Whatever the case, that double play was really it. And that is, I think, of all the moments last night, and maybe Jordan Alvarez at bats, that's where you can look at the Astros and say, you done bleeped up. You screwed this one up. But at the same time, I mean, it's not like that was... A ball that went out of the park, it maybe leads that inning to the Astros scoring a run. It did feel like it gave Aroldis Chapman a big shot of confidence in his arm. But that's really the one moment from last night's game that I'm looking at. And I'm saying, yeah, they effed up there. Otherwise, I'm just tipping my hat. This isn't sarcastic. This isn't condescending. Rangers fans are learning about baseball on the fly. They are. A lot of them stop paying attention. I honestly don't blame them. When you have your hearts crushed in the way that the Rangers did by um, the Cardinals in the World Series, I mean, they're up 3-2 and they blew it. You know, you might just go away from baseball for a while. Get your fix elsewhere. Anyway, I'm really glad that a good friend of ours is uh, alive. I hope he's enjoying the World Series for the Texas Rangers. Check that. I hope he's enjoying the Super Bowl victory for the Texas Rangers yesterday. Uh, Tab? Well, no, no, now he's not on the line. Oh, he's gone? I don't know what happened there. Oh, well, we did have Tab for a second. I'm sure we'll hear from Tab again. Maybe Tab second guessed himself, and he's like, wait a second. Do I want to call in now? Yeah. Or maybe he's like, uh, you know, they only have about a minute till the end of the segment. So oh, is he really? trying to keep us on the clock? I I appreciate the tab. Radio veteran. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
after the summer, he basically is a radio veteran. How, how often true. he's called in, he's <laughs> no one's called in more. I I uh, I do think that that Evan uh, Evan Carter catch the double play that really was kind of it wasn't the game the game because like you said it, even if Altuve t- tags up correctly and it's just one out with the man on first it's that's not like they're gonna still they're not gonna win the game that doesn't guarantee that they're gonna win the game right. it just it just ended any reasonable chance they had to do that with five outs remaining. No doubt. And and Carter, to his credit, too, I mean, you saw in the second inning, he turned a single into a double. Kyle Tucker's lollygagging a little bit, and Carter's like, screw it. I'm just going to run. Kid has wheels. He made some really nice plays, I thought, in left field in addition to that one in the corner. And he got the Rangers' first run of the game by being sneaky. Or I suppose Kyle Tucker shouldn't have lollygagged it. Again, not a great night. Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve. Not a great night for those three. Rubbing it in a little bit, saying that Leody Tavares is the nine-hole hitter. Paul Galancho, after the Rangers took down the Astros 2-0 in the ALCS. Relax. You're a heretic if you think that the Astros are in danger right now. Yeah, I said it. We're all relaxed. We're all calm. It's no big deal. You don't want a bunch of grunts from Halo 2 calling you this, okay? Because it means you're bitch made. This is not a loss to freak out about. This is a tip of the cap. We might be tipping our cap sarcastically, condescendingly, but that's a secret we keep to ourselves, okay? If you got friends, and I'm sure you do, Rangers fans, friends, just be quiet and pat them on the back. Make them feel uncomfortable with what they just did. That's all you can do today. Last night sucked. It's not the end of the series. They lost 2 nothing in a game where Evan Carter made a lot of game-changing plays. Go for monkey 1981 comments. Carter was to blame. Killed three potential rallies for the Strohs in the field. He started the rally in the second. Yeah, he had a great game. And Jordan Montgomery pitched really well. It happens. Not the end of the world. You heard from Dusty Baker. You heard from Justin Verlander. This team's been through this a lot. And hell, this year in particular, <laughs> a season where it has been so up and so down. They've been through stuff like this before. As far as the blame game goes for last night, I honestly am pointing most of my blame at Jordan Alvarez. I thought he stunk. It happens. You have bad nights at the plate, but he in particular looked really bad out there. But a lot of people are going to pin the blame on somebody else whether it's because he struck out with the bases loaded or it's because while he was on the bases, he couldn't make it all the way to third base on a ball that was hit into the outfield. People are always going to point at Martin Maldonado and then right after that, Dusty Baker. In the post-game press conference, Dusty was asked a question about his fearless leader, Martin Maldonado. Maldonado struck out with bases loaded in the fourth there. Did you think about pinch hitting for him? And no. how early How early is too early to Well, that's too that. early. I mean, because, um, you know, it was too early because it was, uh, I mean, we struck out before that with runners on base prior to Maldonado also. Um, you know, your Don had a tough night. Um, and that's in the fourth inning. And you don't change your catcher in the middle of the game like that in a two to nothing game. So no, that was that was uh far too early. Dusty's always gonna be very defensive of Martin Maldonado. I can't even do it last night. Because one of the things we've been doing this year, if you've been listening, is we just get annoyed by the constant pointing of fingers at Dusty Baker and Martin Maldonado when there regularly have been Astros bats that have been quiet. And last night it's on Jose Altuve. What was he? 0 for 3 and the base running gaff. It's on Kyle Tucker. It's on Jordan Alvarez. Martin Maldonado certainly didn't help, though. Even I can't stand up right there. Okay, I guess we're about to get a little bit of gloating. We got our good friend Tab calling in at 713-780-3776. Tab, congratulations on winning your Super Bowl. It must be nice to be up one nothing in the ALCS. Well, 
I'm, I'm going to gloat, but I'm not going to gloat as much as you think I'm going to. It was a good game. It was one game. Were you nervous? Yes, we you're... beat y'all in your house, mm-hmm. two to nothing. <laughs> Didn't even get, you know, Y'all didn't get anything going. The offense yes, was nowhere you know to be found. Now you know who Evan Carter is. Carter was great. Carter truly was great. Now, Tab, I, I got to ask you, how are you feeling when they pulled Jordan Montgomery from the game? I think that was the one part. And the Minute Maid Park crowd, I thought, did a really good job last night. Did you feel nervous when the Rangers bullpen came in the game? Yes, I did. They actually did the job. I especially felt nervous when uh, Chapman came in. I, I, I honestly, Tab, in that moment right there, inwardly I'm like, okay, here it comes. Here it comes. People were booing him when he was coming out of the bullpen, and I tweeted out, hey, guys, we like Aroldis Chapman here. He, he has brought us many great memories, maybe one of the uh, best importers of good Astros memories that there are. But to his credit, he got through that eighth inning, he really needed a lot of help from Evan Carter there, though. Evan Carter, Tab, did you expect that from him last night? Holy crap, he was great. <laughs> I told you a few weeks ago that he was good, and you said, well, I don't even know who he is. I, I, I didn't, Tab, until but last night. You <laughs> I definitely do now. You ain't kidding. <laughs> Tab, we love you, man. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later as this series goes on. Appreciate you calling in. I'll call tomorrow. Win or lose. There we go. That's our tab, everybody. 713-780-3776 to call in to text. And you can join on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5. Captain Pope says, I don't have anything against Paul's sports stuff. I just think he's a douche. Hey, at least you don't think I'm gay. Right? We're making progress. Yeah. And they think you're good at the sports stuff. That's all I need. Just just take the first half. You know what? I'm going to tip my cap. That's a tip of the cap to Captain Pope. Regular hater on the Twitch, tip of the cap. <laughs> it's not sarcastic and condescending like the tip of the hat that we're giving to the Rangers for being up one nothing in this series. Because that is sarcastic. I mean, wait, hang on. No, it's not. It's not. It's not sarcastic at all. It's not condescending at all. Damn, I don't have a great poker face. But for the Rangers, this was a huge win. They've won six playoff games in a row. They do deserve credit. I mean, they played like crap at the end of the year. That allowed the Astros to win the AL West. They had that awful stretch starting in July that allowed both the Astros and Mariners to get back into the AL West race. But they've been really good to open up these playoffs. Six wins in a row is damn impressive. That's basically the way that the Astros started the playoffs last year. A texter says, we have a way field advantage. We got them right where we want them. Well, check that because the Astros did win the division. So they actually have home field advantage. The interesting thing is, though, potentially good for the Astros, if maybe you're betting on the Astros to win it in five or something like that, they take care of business today. The three games after that are up in Arlington against the Rangers. Yeah, they just need the split at home. Just get the split, and then Road Warriors, here we go. Mount up, yes. Get on that motorcycle. Just walk it away. Grab your things, and you walk it away. Put on that mask from Mad Max. Uh, from uh, I believe his name is Humongous. You ever seen uh, a Mad Max, Sean Mapes? Just the Fury Road one. Oh, you didn't. You one. didn't see two. The Road Warrior is is the second one. That one's the best one. Mad Max one is kind of shaky. Mad Max two, the Road Warrior, fantastic. Just walk away. Just walk away. Paul Galancho, ESPN ninety seven five and ninety two five seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six to call in and to text in. R-S-J-R-D-K says, I blame the Astros if the roof was open and would have pushed Reggie's ball to the boxes. That's baseball. That's Rob Manfred and his crooked smile and his crooked teeth and his crooked lies. Just trying to give Arlington a World Series. Uh, some more comments here. Twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5. Uh, Greg Todd, question for y'all. Texans playoff berth or Astros World Series win? Are you on drugs? Are you seriously asking that question, Greg? I love you, bro, but are you seriously asking that? No. Would you rather the Astros win a World Series or the Texans play this Saturday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Against the Bengals. Against the Bengals game. Which would you prefer? (laughs) 
we, we all know the answer to this. Why, why are we asking this question? <laughs> the game we've seen the Texans lose a million times and yeah. sometimes win and then lose. Uh, Greg made up for it with a Twitch comment a little bit before. Guys, it's time to sacrifice someone from the Texans again to make the World Series. What, like Deshaun Watson's ACL? You know, if there was some sort of voodoo magic going on back in the day, with the benefit of hindsight, <laughs> I mean, you hate to see it. If, if they were related. But it did happen right after the Astros won. That was an interesting it was 24 literally hours. literally like the... The practice after, right? right? It was like the Texans practice the day after. I think the Astros won on like a Wednesday, and then he tore his ACL on a Thursday. I woke up and learned that news as soon as I woke up because we did the Astros post game show until four in the morning on the Texans flagship from eight to four. Shout out to me just being an absolute warrior. Shout, Shout out, out to me to- going to ACL on Saturday, the Texans game, and Astros game yesterday. Just shout out to me you know in what? general. Tip of the cap. Thanks for the tip of the cap, Tip Sean. of the cap. Uh, thank you. Always professional. I wanted to wait like 30 minutes to to set myself up for a tip uh, of the cap. almost got there. Like the tip of the cap that we gave to the Rangers, right? 1027. You didn't quite make it to 30. Well, you know, it's me. <laughs> it's the me show. Uh, Largo commented, I would sacrifice the Astros season to relocate the Texans. Okay, let's, let's not get too crazy here. The Texans did win, by the way. Do we need a battle red bump? I think we need a battle red bump. It has been a little bit down. Look, the Rangers won, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. Don't panic. Be loud today when you go to Minute Maid Park, when you skip work, because you got to get there early. What's up with this 337 start time? F the West Coast, man. Just screw the West Coast. Screw the East Coast. Screw all the fake coasts. Our coast is the best coast. I don't know why they're playing that. The Diamondbacks and Phillies game is the later game. What? Because of... Like drunken Philadelphians living across the country is going to give them more ratings. I can say that I'm I'm part Philadelphian by blood. Why are you making that face, Sean? I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. Paul Galancho, ESPN 975 and 925. We do have a call. Let's squeeze him in. Dustin, what's up? Dustin! Hello. Dustin, turn your radio off, sir. All right, my bad. What you got? Well, I was just calling to find. I uh, see. I'm not a big watching baseball during the regular season. I mean, I follow the Astros closely here and everything. But like I like I've been hearing y'all saying that was just a terrible performance by Jordan and all of them last night. Man, I was really disappointed in that. My fiance's husband. I mean, uh, my fiance's brother was at the game. Your fiance's He's a husband. Ranger that- fan. That was going to be a very fun story, Dustin. Okay, we're glad you cleaned that up. Clean up in aisle five. Continue. Sorry to throw you off. Mm-hmm. Dustin, you there? You there. All right. We appreciate the phone call, Dustin. You, you, you can call back and, tr- and try to work this one through if you want. But I'm with him on the Jordan Alvarez at bat. I'm with him on that. The Jordan Alvarez at bat was god-awful, that last one. I mean... He got quick pitched. What the F? That's possible in a playoff game? Like he clearly got quick pitched. He wasn't ready for it. And then he, I, I, I couldn't believe how much he missed on those other two. And again, baseball is a difficult game. I wouldn't be able to do any of those. I'd piss my pants probably if somebody threw a ball down just towards home plate. It came nowhere near me. By the way, Fox with the ump cam. We don't need the ump cam like live. Can, can we see a pitch, see an actual pitch, and then you can go to the ump cam as a replay? Because it doesn't get less impressive when it's a replay. It's still impressive. It's still like, oh, my God, how does anyone ever hit anything? And I, the Fox, I mean, you were at the game, so you didn't see this. The Fox broadcast was, it was. Is it Dodger Joe Davis? Well, yeah, it was Smoltz and Davis. Of course. Davis. And it was not even oh, like those. And John Smoltz, too, from his like Braves BS. Jesus. And those guys weren't Terrible even. Terrible combo. Those guys weren't even that bad. It was like the like artistic decisions that they made, like zooming in on Verlander's like shoe while he's on the rubber. And then like halfway through his motion, then they show like where the pitch goes. It's like completely disorienting. I, I guess the ALCS and you they get a little bit more dramatic with like the tight close-ups and the long but show us the game just show show us some of the game you can do all that other stuff just show us pitches when they happen we got fancy technology 
It wasn't even. It was literally just cameras zooming in yeah, at Sean, people's eyes and feet when Fox, they don't need to. Listen, Fox Baseball, it's Quentin Tarantino. They've, you know, they they did a little bit of surgery that didn't look so good. The surgery that they did that that doesn't look so good is they let Joe Buck and Troy Aikman walk. They let him walk. So doesn't look good. It's it's like a, a friend of mine. She's she was gorgeous. A little too much work on the nose. Still a beautiful girl, but a little too much work on the nose. And yeah, all these new bells and whistles, bolt-ons, all these bells and whistles that Fox is trying to show us, I, I suppose it's supposed to distract us from the fact that the, the nose has been penciled down and all of a sudden she looks like Link from The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Literally like a little triangle. But it's fine. It, it, you you got to just... Just focus on the nuts and the bolts, okay? That was a weird analogy.